Welcome to the nutrient section of the new meal pattern requirements. The nutrients that are monitored with the new meal patterns are calories, sodium, saturated fat, and trans fat. There are minimum and maximum calorie levels averaged over the course of a week. So there may be some days that the calories exceed the limits and some days the calories are below the limits. This is fine as long as overall averaged over a week the calorie requirements are met. The requirements are 550 to 650 calories for grades K to 5, 600 to 700 calories for grades 6 to 8, and 750 to 850 calories for grades 9 to 12. The limits for sodium will be phased in beginning in school year 2014-2015. Sodium limits will decrease in school year 2017-2018 and then again in 2022-2023. Although the sodium limits don't start until the 2014-2015 school year, you may want to begin to make gradual changes now. It is important to start now so the students can gradually get used to the decreased sodium in their meals. Also, beginning to decrease sodium now will be beneficial for the health of your students because school meals tend to be higher in sodium than is recommended. It is helpful to know common sources of sodium in foods. One common source is table salt, which may be included in recipes or prepared foods. But sodium is also a part of many other ingredients. Sodium-containing ingredients such as salt, baking powder, and baking soda are often a part of baked goods. And many commercial foods contain sodium-containing additives such as monosodium glutamate, sodium nitrates, and sodium nitrites. Processed and prepared foods can be a major source of sodium. Foods such as canned vegetables, soups, lunch meat, and frozen entrees tend to be very high in sodium. Also, condiments such as soy sauce, ketchup, and salad dressing also usually contain sodium as well and can contribute a significant amount of sodium to the diet if eaten in large quantities. Some foods contain naturally occurring sodium. There are several ways to reduce the sodium in your meals. Examine your recipes and see where they have salt that can be reduced or omitted. You can compare similar items and try to purchase items that are lower in sodium. It should become easier to purchase products that are lower in sodium because many major companies are voluntarily reducing the sodium in their products as part of a national salt reduction initiative. USDA is working on reducing the sodium in foods available through the commodity program and they already offer some reduced sodium commodities such as cheeses and beans. USDA will also provide some additional technical assistance and training. When possible, serve more fresh foods and less processed foods. If you are unable to use fresh vegetables, frozen vegetables are a good alternative. You can also try lower sodium versions of various popular processed foods and modify recipes that use high sodium ingredients such as spaghetti sauce, cheese sauce, and soups. Many schools have been successful using herbs and spices rather than salt in recipes to flavor food. Usually it is best to reduce sodium gradually to allow children to get used to the new taste. Some schools have done well reducing salt in the beginning of the school year when children are not as familiar with the taste of foods from the previous year. A note of caution, do not use salt substitutes that contain potassium chloride because they can be harmful for some people and are not appropriate for use in schools. The limits for saturated fat will remain the same at less than 10% of total calories when averaged over a week. There is no longer a limit on total fat. This will allow you to use some healthier fats such as olive oil in your cooking. However, you should be cautious in using too much fat because doing so may cause you to exceed the calorie limits. There is a new restriction for trans fat. Every product or ingredient used in the school lunch program must say zero grams trans fat per serving on the label or manufacturer specification. Labeling regulations allow for an item to say zero grams of trans fat on the label if it contains less than 0.5 gram of trans fat per serving. There is some naturally occurring trans fat in beef, lamb, and dairy products, but this trans fat is excluded from the trans fat limits. 
If you have a mixed product, such as a taco or a burrito, that might have both naturally occurring and added trans fat, you will need to contact the manufacturer to determine how much of the trans fat is added. Now, as a summary, we will answer some nutrition jeopardy questions. True or false? Effective school year 2012-2013, lunch meals will have to provide a minimum and maximum amount of calories averaged over a week. This is true. True or false? Limits to sodium in school meals will not take effect until the school year 2014-2015, but it is a good idea to start reducing sodium gradually now. And this is also true. True or false? Saturated fat limits will remain the same at less than 10% of calories averaged over a week. True or false? Effective school year 2012-2013, nutrition label or manufacturer specifications must specify zero grams of trans fat per serving, less than 0.5 gram per serving. These are also both true. If you have questions about the content of this presentation, please contact the Pennsylvania Department of Education, Division of Food and Nutrition. Contact information can be found on this slide. Funding for this presentation has been provided by a 2011 Team Nutrition Training Grant from the United States Department of Agriculture.